Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes 3rd edition and we're doing problem number 5.3. Problem statement says two liquid streams are flowing at constant rates into a blender. One is benzene, which flows at a measured rate of 20 liters per minute, and the other is toluene. The blended mixture enters a storage tank, inner diameter equals 5.5 meters, equipped with a sight gauge. During an interval in which no liquid leaves the storage tank, the liquid level in the tank is observed to increase by 0.15 meters over a one hour period. Calculate the flow rate of toluene into the blender in liters per minute and the composition of the tank contents in weight percent benzene. So we've got benzene going into the tank here. It's at this volumetric flow rate, which is equal to this in meters per hour. Um, then we've got our toluene. Um, we don't know what the volumetric flow rate is, but they want us to figure it out. Then we've got stream three here that comes out of this mixing tank and goes into this storage tank. Um, they want us to know what the weight percent of benzene is in this stream, because that will be what it is in this tank. Okay, um, they have this sight gauge here. Um, this, the level in the tank, um, rose up a certain amount in a one hour period. So it rose up 0.15 meters in one hour, okay? And the diameter of the tank is 5.5 meters. Okay, we want to know what these things are. Okay, let's get some of our um, component uh, information. So we've got toluene here, our molar mass, um, and our density, that is in grams per centimeter cubed, okay? Then uh, this is what toluene looks like. It looks like a benzene ring with one little carbon attachment onto the end. Um, then we've got, um, this is our benzene information. Um, this is our benzene ring, okay? So these, you can see, are very similar, okay? They're very similar structure, so we estimate um, what the combined density of the solution is. Um, with this estimation. This estimation is calculated based off of um, the fact that you know if you add these together that the volume is additive and it doesn't um, shrink or expand when you add these things together. You don't gain volume or lose volume basically. Volume is conserved is what we're going to assume. Okay um, so these are the tank properties and the float rates. Okay, so we've got our tank property here. This is the volume in the tank. The volume in the tank is equal to um, pi r squared times the height of the liquid. Okay, um, so volume of the tank. They gave us the diameter of the tank, so I'm going to change this, this um, r into a diameter. Okay, so this changed into this. Now I'm going to take the derivative of the volume of the tank with respect to time. So the derivative of the volume of the tank with respect to time equals pi, which is a constant, the diameter is a constant, and four are the constants. So we pull all those out, and then h, it does change with time, right? They gave us um, what that change in time was um, in delta h. That's a change in time, and then this is how much it changed in time, okay? So this estimates what the volumetric flow rate is into the tank. The change of the volume of the tank with time is equal to a volumetric flow rate, okay? So this is the volumetric flow rate in the interval that they gave to us. And if that interval is representative of how the tank normally operates, then that's what the volumetric flow rate is normally. Okay. Now we need to do our component balances on the system. In order to solve what these things are, we need to do mass balances, component balances, things like that. Okay, so now we're doing our component balances. We have the um, 
mass balance on the benzene and the mass balance on the toluene. So there's just the two components, but then we have several process specifications, okay? So one of the process specifications is that the mass of stream one is equal to the, den the density of benzene times the volumetric flow rate. And then you can do the same thing for stream three, and you can do the same thing for stream two, but um, we don't need to do that. Okay, um, then we've got our another process spec here. This is basically um, what we said before. We're gonna assume this thing right here, right? We're gonna assume this. Okay, so that's what this is. Um, and then the final process spec here is that when you add up the weight fractions of the benzene, or the toluene and the benzene, it equals one. If you sum up all the weight fractions, it equals one. Okay, and this is for stream three that we're particularly interested in. Okay, so which one of these will be the easiest to solve for an unknown? Uh, this one right here, because it only has one unknown, right? The rest of these are known. So we can calculate what the mass is, uh, mass flow rate of stream one is pretty easily. Okay, so that's what that equals. Um, then we follow that up with, okay, what's the next one that's gonna be the easiest to solve? Well, this one only has two unknowns. Um, so maybe, maybe using these, we can just start substituting things in. Oh, well, this one, this one also only has two unknowns, right? Okay, so now it's a substitution game. We just have to substitute things in until we get an equation that just has one unknown, okay? So I'm gonna use this guy, this one, and this one to get everything in terms of, of the benzene weight fraction, okay? So I just start substituting things in here. I do a little bit of re I do a little bit of reworking here on on uh, this function right here in order to uh, flip the, the density upside down so I can substitute in a values for density that are just based on this weight fraction here. Okay, so I substitute those into this equation and get this. And then I expand this thing out, okay? And then I substitute in, or I've got everything in terms of this value and this value, and everything else is actually known. Um, we know all of these other values, right? Because we knew we knew the value uh, of uh, the volumetric flow rate of stream three because we calculated it up here based off of this other process specification we had. Okay. Okay, so we have everything in terms of, of our weight fractions, and then we know these. So this is a system of two equations, two unknowns right here, and so then we can solve for our weight fractions. Okay, this being the one that they asked us for. So that's perfect. So now we move on to the next one. We now have our weight fractions, right? So we can calculate what the density is. Boom, there's the density of the combined stream, stream three, okay? Now we know the densities, we can calculate what the mass flow rate is. Now we know these mass flow rates, so we can calculate this mass flow rate. And that's what that is. Okay, and then we can get a volumetric flow rate because we know the density of toluene, and we get the volumetric flow rate of toluene. Um, but that's in liters cubed per hour. They wanted it in liters per minute, so we just do a conversion here and get liters per minute. Okay. Here's a bonus for you. We could have made our lives a lot easier had we remembered, had we remembered that this means that the volume is conserved, right? Volume is conserved. That means we're assuming V1 plus V2 equals V3, right? Okay. So if we have our V1 and V2, we already got um, V3 pretty easily, right? We got V3 er way early on, and we knew what V1 was, so we could have just solved for what V3 was, or our V2 was pretty easily, um, a lot earlier than trying to do all of this stuff, right? I was just showing you that you could do it that way too. Um, so this means this, right? Because if you assume, if you assume this, then this is true, 
and then this is true, and that's what that equals, <laughs> okay? So that's a little bit of bonus information. Remember, if you're assuming volume is additive and, and you're using this equation, maybe it's easier to use this instead, okay? Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem-solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.